Hi, and congratulations on the purchase of your beautiful new 2018 SR Kicks. This is a phenomenal vehicle, brand new in our market here. I know that you're gonna love this. I know that we did cover a lot when we went over the delivery. I wanna make sure that you've got something to refer back to so that if you have any questions, you can have a quick peek again. But if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to call, text, or email me. My contact info will follow at the end. Let's have a look at this amazing new vehicle that you just purchased and go back over the features again. So we're gonna start right here on this beautiful display. So we've got our floating display here. This is new for Nissan. Right now we are on the audio menu and while I'm on FM, I have 12 presets. So to set any channel that I want, I can just press and hold. I hear a beep and now it's set. So that means that my preset is now set. If I switch over to satellite radio, which you're gonna get free for the first three months, I have 18 presets that I can set on this. So no shortage of music available. Also down here, I've got AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, which the streaming through Bluetooth is phenomenal. Your quality on your Bluetooth music is actually gonna be higher than the quality that you get from the radio just because of the file formats and the way that they come through. So you'll get a better quality sound through Bluetooth audio, even though the sound is fantastic through the radio because you do have the Bose Premium sound system. That Bose sound system is built right into the headrest. So let's have a look at how to change that right now. If I go into the settings and then into sound, down the bottom here under personal space, right now it's set on the wide view. So this is going to include my headrest and I can use the dial here to change that so that it's more based on the front or go for that wider view or I can get a really good balance right there. So that's how you really change where your music is going through the personal space. The further over you go, the more that you're gonna get out of the headrest. Now it is still gonna be heavily concentrated throughout the vehicle as well. You're just gonna get a better concentration in the headrest than you would on any other setting. So we're gonna go back. We've got our speed sensitivity here, which we're gonna increase just because if you're on the highway, we want to make sure that the vehicle is going to compensate for any additional road noise as you pick up speed so that you're not having to change the volume all the time. We'll come back into here. To set up your phone, same thing, in through the settings, in through connections. Right now I've got my phone connected, but all I would do is hit add phone. And then you're gonna look for a device called My Kicks within the Bluetooth settings on your phone. So, we've already set your phone up, but if you need to set up another one at any point, because if I cancel out, I can set up to six devices on this. And as it connects them, I can then choose which one's gonna receive or make phone calls and which one's gonna play music or not if I want to do so. So we'll come back out of here my clock is also set in the same area. Right now, I've got it set to display on screen, which also shows it over on the driver assist display. The format right now is 12 hours. I've got a day format, which currently is month, day, and year. And then I can set my clock manually. So right now, I know that that time is off by about two minutes. So it is a.m., it is 10 o'clock. We're gonna go up by two minutes. It's the 29th day of June, 2018. So now that we're good, I can hit the back button. Anytime that you wanna go back, there is a back button on the screen as well as over here for a physical back button. So we're gonna come all the way back out of there and now we're back to our audio display. There is a home menu, which looks like this and you can fully customize that. Again, it's back in through the settings and then customize home menu and you can pick and choose which widgets are gonna show up. So we're gonna come back out. Right now we've got just our radio and the call history showing. There's another way to change your source for your music. When we went in through the settings to sound, I see I've got my bass, my treble, and my personal space. So I'm gonna back it here. Then if I push this button once up the top, I can change my bass, treble, and personal space and each one it switches every time I press it. 
Now it does not stay up there long, so once you get it up, make sure you do what you want to do for it, and then it's just going to disappear. In below here, we've got our climate controls. So we've got our heated seats here in the front. We've got high, low, and off. We can set a temperature. So when I set the temperature and I'm on auto, right away I notice my fan dialed up. It's got the airflow going to the floor. It's trying to get the temperature of the vehicle up to 21 degrees right now because it's only 16 outside. It's kind of rainy, so it's not as warm inside the vehicle. If it was hot out, that fan would most likely focus more on the fans right up here on the dash. And the fan would dial up and it would be trying to get us down to 21 degrees. So the beauty of this is once you find the temperature that's comfortable for you, you never have to worry about going through and fiddling with all of your buttons here to find the right temperature, whether it's summer or winter. It's just going to do what it has to to get you to this temperature. It'll determine if it needs warm or cold air coming out. When you're on auto, it's automatically going to adjust where the airflow is as well as the fan speed and it will adjust this as you get closer to your temperature. If you want to manually control your temperature, I can focus all my air onto the front and we notice the auto turns off. Or I can use the mode button to set it for the fans, the fans and floor, the floor, the windshield and floor, or back there. So I'm going to turn auto back on. My rear defrost is also going to activate my heated side mirrors. And then this button here right now, while this is off, I have fresh air coming in. If I hit this, I now have recycled air. Down below here, we've got a 12 volt power port, an auxiliary port, and a USB port. This USB port interacts with your vehicle. If you've got an Android phone, you're going to want to download the Android Auto app and install it on your phone. It is free through the Google Play Store. From there, once you plug in the cord to your phone there and connect it to your phone, Android Auto is instantly going to come up on your screen here. We'll go over that in a couple minutes. The same thing works for Apple CarPlay. The only difference is on an iPhone you do not need to download an app. Simply plug in the lightning cord in your USB port and connect it to your phone and Apple CarPlay instantly comes up here on the screen. And once again, like I said, we will go back over that in a few minutes. Our start button has moved down by our gear shift on this vehicle. Traditionally with Nissan, it's been up on the dash, but this one is down by our gear shift. And then finally, back by our cup holders here, we do have a couple more USB ports. These are strictly for charging purposes. So these ones will not interact with the vehicle. Next up, let's have a look at the steering wheel and some of the controls that you have from there. All right, so we're gonna have a look at the Android Auto here. To work the Android Auto, you need to connect via a USB cord down below here, right to your phone. You need to have the Android Auto app installed, which you can get from the Google Play Store. It is a free device, a free app. From here, once that we're connected, we can hit the button down here for directions. It launches Google Maps. It makes your car pretty much act like a navigation system at that point. Just be aware it is gonna use a little bit of your data, but not much. To get back into here, we can simply hit this button here. We can access our phone right from here. As it does disconnect your uh, Bluetooth hands-free. And then over here, we've got music. Give us a full list of any music that we wanna listen to or we can head back out of the app right by this button here. So when I hit this and then press our button, it takes us back out of Android Auto. And that's as simple as Android Auto is. All right, we're gonna have a look at Apple CarPlay now. This is a little bit different than Android Auto. You don't need an app on your phone to work this. Once you connect your iPhone to the system, again, using the cord to do so, this is the screen that pops up. So very much like the Android Auto, the biggest feature here that you're probably gonna use is our maps. So with this, it's gonna give you the same feel as a navigation system in the vehicle. It does use a little bit of data. It's not bad on your data, but please be aware that it does use that. And again, like the Android Auto, it disables the Bluetooth hands-free. So your phone, you still have the option here and you still answer it right from the steering wheel, but it is all through the cord on your phone for this. You've also got access to your music, any podcasts that you might have on here, 
audiobooks, messaging, and WhatsApp. And then that gives you a good view of the Apple CarPlay. So as we look at our steering wheel here, we see we've got a few controls. We're gonna start on the right side. Over here, I've got my Bluetooth hands-free. So this button here is used to make or, or hang up phone calls. Or when your phone is connected, it will actually read a text message to you if you have one coming in. If you have an iPhone, you do need to change one setting. So in your Bluetooth settings on an iPhone, when you go into the My Kicks, there's a little I over to the right of it. You have to select that and then set the show notifications to on. When you do that, whether you've got an iPhone or an Android phone, any text message that comes in, it's gonna beep inside the vehicle. On the display, it's gonna tell you you have a text message. You can just press this button to read it or you can press and hold to ignore it. This button here is for our voice recognition. This is the one that you would use to make a phone call. So you're gonna follow the voice prompts. However, as you get more comfortable with the commands, instead of listening all the way through the voice prompts, as soon as you hit this, if you know the command that you wanna say, press it a second time to interrupt the voice recognition, wait for the beep, and then simply speak your command. You can also change your audio through the voice recognition as well. This is gonna turn on our cruise control. So if I watch the screen, as I turn that on, I see up here I've got an indicator. So from there, I can set my speed. It's gonna show me the exact speed that I have set there and it's gonna highlight green. If I wanna kick off the cruise control, I can either tap the brake or hit cancel. From there, I can resume if I'm going back up to speed. I can increase my speed by tapping a few times here or decrease it by tapping a few times here. So I'll turn that back off for the moment. On the left side of our steering wheel, We've got our volume buttons for the radio. And these two buttons here, while you're on radio, it's gonna skip through the presets. So I'm gonna change my view back over here to audio. I'm gonna set us on preset one. And then I'm gonna hit this button to the right. And we notice it goes to preset two, preset three, and so on. And if I hit the arrow to the left, we're gonna go back the other way. So, gives you a really nice control there. If you're on Bluetooth audio, auxiliary, or USB, it is going to skip tracks by hitting these buttons. Now on the left side, it's gonna jump back to the beginning of your song. You have to hit it a second time to go back a track. Our OK button here with the arrows around it, it's gonna change our driver assist display. So this is a nice, beautiful new feature for Nissan. We've got a full digital display on this side here where traditionally we've had a static tachometer. So right now I'm showing the tachometer. I'm gonna go over to the right, but before I do that, while the tachometer is showing, right in the center here, it shows how many kilometers to empty on my gas tank. My gas reading is down below here and it tells me that my tank is on the driver's side of the vehicle. So we're gonna go to the right. So my screen right here is gonna show me what's going on with the radio. If I look down the bottom, I see OK source. So from this screen, by pressing the OK button here on the steering wheel, I can change from FM over to satellite radio, to Bluetooth audio, to auxiliary, back to AM, and then back to FM. So with that, while I'm on this screen, I have full control of everything to do with my audio right here from the steering wheel. It allows you to keep your eyes facing forward, keep your focus on the road, and not worry about turning your head to try and adjust any of the stereo there. So if we go to the right again, so this screen right here has a fuel economy history for the vehicle. If I press up, because I notice I've got two little dots over here, if I press up, I get my actual fuel economy. Now, my average fuel economy is shown here. Now, as you see, we do seem to be a little bit high and that's because I am sitting, sitting idling and we do idle a lot in our demo, which is why this is higher than normal. But I can reset that simply by pressing the OK button, go down to yes, and now my fuel economy is reset back to normal. I'm gonna go to the right again. From here, I see I've got a pile more dots on this screen. So. This is new for Nissan as well. This is the first vehicle outside of the Murano in Canada that has a digital speedometer. 
So I can leave it on this and it'll show me my digital speedometer. It still shows me what's going on with my radio down below it. If I hit down, I get all my averages. And again, I can reset this and I can individually pick which one I want to reset or I can reset everything. So that sets it all back. From there I'm going to hit back. So this is my averages, my average fuel economy, my average distance, my average speed, and my time driving. Driving aids is pertaining to the automatic emergency braking that you have in the front of the vehicle. So if somebody in front of you suddenly hits the brakes and you close that gap really fast, inside the vehicle it is going to beep at you and the gas pedal is going to push back against your foot. At that point, if you don't react, the vehicle is going to react for you. The beeping is going to get louder and faster, and if necessary, it will apply the brakes to help avoid an oncoming collision. It does give you a moment so that you can react first, but it will take those necessary steps as it needs to. The other part of this is our blind spot detection. So our blind spot indicators are on the inside of the vehicle, right up on the A-frame pillar by the mirrors. When you have a vehicle in your blind spot, whether you're passing it or it's passing you, the indicator on that side of the vehicle is going to light up and stay lit up a dull orange. So for example, if there's a vehicle in the driver's side blind spot, this indicator is going to light up and stay lit up a dull orange. While that's lit up, if I signal to go left, that indicator is going to start flashing and it's going to beep at me a couple times inside the vehicle to let me know I do have a vehicle in my blind spot. So that's our driving aids. If we go down again, it shows me my tire pressure. Now this will show up once I start driving. It will show me the individual pressure for all four wheels. Now we see as a default we're set for 32. So we want to be right around the 32 mark or a little bit higher. In the summer it's going to tend to run higher and when your vehicle warms up as you're driving it's going to run higher because the tires will be warmer. If you do get a low tire, you're going to get a warning that's going to pop up and tell you you have a low tire and it'll show you where at. You can press the OK button to make the warning go away. From there, this screen will show you exactly what the pressure is on your low tire. But the beauty of it is when you go to the garage to start putting air in the tire, simply start putting air into the tire and it's going to beep the horn to tell you when to stop. There's no guesswork involved. You don't need to know how to read a meter or a gauge or anything else. It's just going to beep to tell you when to stop. If you were to continue to put air in after that, when you hit the high limit, it's going to beep three times in succession. You really do need to stop at that point or you risk ruining your tire. Our next screen down just shows our coolant temperature. So this will show in the winter, especially when you're waiting for that heat to kick in, the moment that this bar starts moving up, that's when your heat's going to start coming in. Our final screen down here shows what's going on with our chassis. So if you take a hard turn or hit a bump hard, this is going to give you some color indications, whereabouts on the vehicle everything is being handled. So we're going to go back up to the top one here, and then we're going to go to the right. So this is our setting screen. Normally there is only one setting that I change in here, and it's how the vehicle unlocks. So by default, Nissan vehicles automatically unlock when you turn the vehicle off. However, if we go into vehicle settings, locking, and auto door unlock, we can see we've already changed this one so that the moment we shift into park, it unlocks. So it is a more preferential way to do it for most people. If you don't want it that way, you can switch it back to ignition off, or you can just turn it off altogether so that you automatically manually have to undo it every time. So we're going to back out of here and here. A couple last things. We have our wipers right here. So if I want to do a single swipe on a mist wiper, I can just tap up once and it does one pass on the wiper. Intermittent is just down once and from there I can set my intermittent speed using the dial right here. Another one down is just going to put my wipers in regular mode and then once more puts them in high speed. My back wiper is controlled with this end dial over here and right now it's off. I can put it to intermittent or I can just put it on regular mode. 
Now, if I want to clean my windshield, I simply pull this towards the steering wheel. If I want to clean the back window, I can push this towards the dash. Over on the other side, on our turn signal indicator, we've also got our lights. So, you can put your park lights on, you can put your headlights on, or if you put it on auto, it's automatically going to determine when the lights come on based on how bright or dark out it is. With that said, if I put it on, I do see an indicator right down here. I can turn my fog lights on and I get an additional indicator down below. But if I set us back to auto, because it's not bright or dark enough for the headlights to come on, the fog lights don't come on either. The headlights need to be on for the fog lights to come on. So that's all right there. The final thing that I want to go over is our key fob. So a couple things related to the key fob. You've got your keyless entry here. We've got our panic button. You have factory remote start on this vehicle as well. So to work that, you're gonna hit the lock button and then hold the top button for five seconds. It's gonna work from up to 200 feet away. From there, the vehicle is gonna start and it's gonna run for up to 10 minutes. You do need to physically engage the vehicle within that time frame, or it will turn off. To engage the vehicle, after you've remote started it, you're gonna hop in and right up on the driver assist display, it's still gonna tell you, foot on the brake, and push the start button. Once you do that, the vehicle is engaged. If for some reason you're running behind and you want to extend it, hit the lock button and you'll add 10 minutes to the count. So if it's been running for eight minutes and you hit lock, it'll run to the 18 minute mark. If you change your mind, simply hit the top button to turn it back off. Now, you can remote start it twice or remote start and extend it once after that, the vehicle does need to be physically engaged. It will not let you remote start a third time or even a second time if you've extended it once. The vehicle does need to be physically engaged. That's a safety feature so that you don't accidentally keep remote starting it. Finally, with the key fob, because it is a fob, there is a battery inside of this. So if your battery starts getting low, your first indication is going to be up on your driver assist display. You're going to get in, you're going to go to start it, and it's going to say incorrect key ID. From there, wait a moment, let the message go away, try and start it again. That's your first indication that the battery inside of your key fob needs to be changed. If you continue to go to where the battery in the key fob dies, in the very back here, we do have a key. There is a keyhole in the driver's side door that will allow you to unlock the door. Once you get in, take the key fob. Put the Nissan emblem directly against the start button and use that to push the button in. Your vehicle will still start at that point. However, at that point, you do really need to go and get a new battery for your key fob. To switch your battery, you can either take it right to the dealership or take your key out of the key fob. And then we've got two little recessed areas here. If you get something inside of one of those and give it a little twist, your key fob will pop open. There's a lithium ion battery inside of that, very similar to a watch battery. It's got a number on the battery, that's your battery size. You're gonna to wanna to go and pick up a new battery and Canadian Tire, your drugstores, Walmart, any number of places carry those batteries. You can pick up a battery there or as I mentioned, you can come into the dealership, they have batteries, they will switch it right out for you. Congratulations again on the purchase of your beautiful new SR Kicks 2018. This is a phenomenal vehicle. It's amazing on gas. It's a lot of fun to drive. It's got a lot of pep to it. I know that you're going to love it. The sound system is amazing. Couldn't ask for much better in a vehicle, especially at the price point that it's at. I hope you had a good chance to go back through everything. I hope this was able to help refresh your memory from what we covered during the delivery. And if you still have any questions or at any point have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Call, text, or email. All of my contact info will immediately follow. I look forward to seeing you for any future service dates. Please pop by and say hello. If you stop in and I'm not around and you need help, anybody here at the dealership will help you. Hopefully I'll see you again when your time is ready for a new, another new vehicle. Take care.